couple of weeks ago, we started a new sermon series based on a passage in Hebrews chapter 5, in which the writer says he's got lots more to say and a lot more to explain, and God's got a lot more gifts to give to the readers, but they're not in a position to receive them. They're not mature enough yet. The writer says they should be. By this time, they should be teaching other people, and they should be uh, able to accept and, and learn the things that God wants them to have, but they're not. He says, you're still infants. You haven't grown up. That passage bothered me enough that I got thinking, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be missing out on God's blessings because I'm not growing enough or trusting enough or mature enough. And I don't want our church to miss out on the things God could do through us just because we're in a place where we're not blessable yet. We're not able to do the things he's asking us to do, even though we should be able to be. Over the last couple of weeks, then, we've done a couple of lessons to try and reorient our thinking, to help our hearts be in tune with God. And so uh, two weeks ago, we focused on the 23rd Psalm and talked about the Lord being our shepherd and how he leads us and guides us and provides for us, that we're not alone, that that nothing just sort of happens at random chance, that uh, our lives just aren't lucky, but they are shepherded. And uh, I think that's a good first place to start. We've got to believe that God is with us and loves us and cares for us. Really believe it to the point it makes us do things. Uh, last week we focused on Daniel and we talked about how uh, Daniel's confidence wasn't in himself, it was in, in God. Daniel didn't do the things Daniel did because he was good and he was strong and he was faithful. He did the things he did because God was strong and God was faithful and God was capable. And, and so I suggested there that we need to get our hearts and our minds focused on, on the one that actually helps us and put our confidence there and stop saying, I can't do this, because that's not true. Well, this week, we're taking the next step. If you'd like to hear those other two sermons, by the way, they're on our YouTube page. You can go back and watch them, which might be a good thing if you haven't heard them yet, because this week's sermon uh, stands on the foundation of those other thoughts. This week, we're going to talk about hearing a different voice. I'm convinced that if I actually am going to change my heart and my mind and my thinking, or if, better, if God's going to do that, then I need to start hearing a different voice. I need to start listening to something other than what I've been listening to. I have to start listening to things that are different than what most people around me are listening to. If I'm filling myself up with the same stuff that non-believers are filling themselves up with, then a life of faith isn't any different than anything else. It's ineffective. If we are going to be shaped by God, we've got to start hearing a different voice. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, argue this week that uh, we better tune in to something else. In our Bible study, uh, we're in 1 Kings chapter 20. This is one of those chapters you might skip over if you were teaching this class. In fact, I almost skipped over it because it's just a story about God's people going to war against an enemy, and it didn't seem like it had a lot to do with us. But as I reread it, I realized, no, hang on a second, there are things here for us to learn because we're in a battle. Uh, Ephesians says we are at war, a spiritual war for our souls. And so the things that we find out about uh, physical war and battles, those there are some lessons that we can apply to us in our spiritual battles as well. And so we are going to take 1 Kings chapter 20 and apply it to our spiritual lives. And, and again, I think it's going to be really practical and it's going to be really helpful. Uh, so again, two lessons this week whose simple goal is to make sure we are tuning into Christ, that we are being the people we claim to be, that it's not just words, that it's actually finding its way to our hearts and into our everyday life. Super practical, super helpful, I hope, and uh, it's been useful to me. So, Again, I don't know where you are this week. I don't know how you feel. I don't know if you're really excited and life's going great or if you feel really down and far from God. If 
Maybe you're feeling lonely or sad, or maybe you're feeling hopeful, or maybe hope is the farthest thing from you. Uh, I just want to remind you that however you feel this week, church is for you. Um, God's people are here, and we gather not because we've got it all together, but we gather because we need one another. We need God. We need help. We need direction. We need forgiveness. We need grace. If any of that sounds like something you need, please come on Sunday. We're going to celebrate a good God who looks after us. And we're going to celebrate the fact that, uh, that he does guide us. He does look after us. And we can have confidence in him. It's going to be a hopeful Sunday. Maybe bring someone who would need that hope as well.